are not alone on your journey. Listen in to the Unshakable Living Show, Supernaturally and Divinely Unshakable with Lisa Belts, twice a month for your well-deserved dose of positive energy and your personal reminder that you are perfectly imperfect, and that's okay. Find your true calling and influence the world around you for the better with your profound gifts. Walk away feeling truly unshakable. Remember, God can't steer a parked car, so step on the gas now with Lisa and let him do the rest. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Today is Wednesday, June 22nd, at least here in the United States. And I have some exciting information to share. Today is a really special day as my daughter, my baby, gave birth to her baby. So we have three older grandsons and we now have a baby granddaughter. And mother and baby and daddy are all doing well. And it is just kind of a banner, stellar, exciting day. So shout out to Lindsay. I am so proud of her. She did an incredible job and the baby is perfect. Even though she's a couple of weeks early, it's just super, super exciting. I have to travel next Monday. And so I told her that she couldn't have the baby next Monday. So she didn't, she just had her a little bit early instead. So um, super, super excited. And so we're going to talk about emotions today. And obviously, I am experiencing and feeling a lot of emotions. And today's emotions are all very positive. But sometimes we feel emotions that are not so positive. And today we're going to talk about a simple tool to use to help us change a negative or a lower vibe emotion or something you don't want to feel and kind of turn it around into something more positive, a little healthier for you. And so we're probably all familiar with the, the term IQ, you know, that measure of intelligence quota. We've heard about it. We've probably all experienced it in school, college, in life or whatever. So we're all familiar with IQ, which is problem solving abilities. But over the past 25 years, there's also been the development of another measurement called EQ or emotional quota, quotient, sorry, or emotional intelligence. And that uh, uh, the emotional intelligence is the ability to perceive, understand, and manage emotions. But you know what? As an adult, I really don't remember ever being taught about emotions. As a child, your parents help you learn to uh, control them and to name them. You know, we're all pretty good at naming fear. We can name love. We can name anger and some of the different things. But there's also a lot of emotions that we feel that it can be really hard to put a word or a name to. And so emotional intelligence and EQ is really giving us tools and words and understanding of ourselves and our emotions. One, because knowledge is power. If you have the ability to identify and really name an emotion, it really puts you back in that driver's seat of not being controlled by it. And, you know, I'm, I'm an author. Again, most of you know about my book, Becoming Unshakable. If not, it is on sale right now on Amazon. Uh, next Monday will be the one year anniversary of my book launch. So I encourage you, if you don't have a copy of Becoming Unshakable, to go grab one. Um, the workbook that goes with it is also on sale. So, so let's turn back to emotions here for just a minute. So what is an emotion? You know, we all have them, but do we really know the definition of it? So an emotion is defined as one, an instinctive or intuitive feeling as distinguished from reasoning or knowledge. Another definition says, Emotions are mental states brought on by neurophysiological changes that are associated with thoughts, feelings, behavioral responses, and a degree of pleasure or displeasure. So those are a little bit clinical feeling, but again, it helps us to differentiate an emotion from knowledge or thought. 
emotions are the things that we feel. And a lot of times as a life coach, I really want people to be in control of their life. I want them to own their emotions. I want them to own what they're feeling. We talk a lot about journaling and it's really helpful to have words to describe the nuances between emotions. Because again, as I said before, it gives you the ability to choose, do I want to stay in this emotion or do I want to flip it to something else? And so in the early 2000s, um, some of the scientific studies began in Germany, but it has spread to many, many other countries. Scientists actually started measuring the vibrational frequency of different emotions. And over time, they've developed a scale from the lowest emotion to the highest emotion. And our bodies are made up of energy. It's just a physics thing. And so the vibrational frequencies actually measure what is happening in our physical bodies that is generated by our thoughts and emotions. So the lowest vibrational emotion is the emotion of shame. And anyone that has experienced true shame can relate to the fact that it is depressive, it is oppressive, it is just a very, very downward spiral kind of thing. The highest emotion, on the other hand, is the emotion of love. And honestly, that's what I'm experiencing today for this new baby granddaughter of mine. The first time I held her is just there is this outpouring of love from you that you don't really know where it comes from, but you know that it is a high vibrational state. And so I want to go back to some of the lower vibrational emotions because those are the ones that can drag us down. We all have days that are hard. We all have days where we're blue or we're angry or resentful or we feel hatred, um, resentment, all of these other kinds of things. And depression factors into that as well. But we don't have to stay there. And so I want to give you a really simple script or tool that you can use to flip emotions. You know, we talk about flipping pancakes and flipping houses and flipping coins. Now you're going to be able to flip your emotions. And so I woke up one morning um, last week and literally woke up with this phrase in my mind. And the phrase is, I choose something because of something else. So this is a really powerful statement. So I use a lot of affirmations, which are you know positive declarations, but this particular statement really puts you in the driver's seat. It is a power statement. It is a declaration. So for me, the example I wanna share is I have a lot of food allergies. There is a laundry list of stuff that I cannot or at least should not eat. And I get really resentful. I get angry sometimes and, and there's really nobody to be angry at. So I'm angry at my own body, which is not a positive thing. And so the power statement that came to me for that is, I choose to eat healthy today because I like the energy it gives me and the sense of accomplishment when I get things done. And so it is taking that resentment and flipping it around to saying, you know what? I'm grateful that I have food, good food to eat because of the energy it gives me and the things that I can go get taken care of when I am eating healthy. So again, is a way to take that and turn it around to our benefit. I also want to make sure that you know um, to say it out loud. You know, in, in Genesis in the Bible, it talks about that God spoke the world into being. And I believe that we are co-creators with God. And so when we speak our words, when we speak our truth, we are creating and co-creating. And that goes both ways. That can be a positive or it can be a negative. You know, when you repeat phrases to yourself, either under your breath or out loud, you know, God, I screwed up again. I'm so stupid that is creating. But if you turn that around and say, you know what, this is something new and I'm learning to do something new and it's okay for me to be a beginner. 
that is turning it around and giving yourself grace. So when you use this power statement, when you feel a certain emotion, I want you to use that phrase, I choose X because Y, and you need to speak it out loud. And you may need to do it multiple times. And so my giveaway today is anyone that emails me at coachlisa at lisabelts.com. So C-O-A-C-H-L-Y-S-A at L-Y-S-A-B-E-L-T-Z.com and just put in the subject line emotions. I'm going to send you a one page PDF that lists out the top 20 emotions that we can experience and ways to turn that around and flip it to something else. And so I've written out a few examples that I'm going to share here today, just so you get a sense of this. You can easily do this on your own, but if you want the PDF, happy to send that to you. So let's talk about shame. Shame is that lowest vibrational emotion, and there are flavors or nuances or variations of shame. But the script, to flip the script, it says, instead of feeling shame, I choose to feel embarrassed because I have worth and value. And so again, if you think of emotion as a scale, you're not going to flip from shame to love in one giant step. Your subconscious and your intellect just won't believe that. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose a lower vibrational emotion and notch it up a couple of steps. And so to take shame and change that to embarrassment is moving it from that, you know, the, the basement of emotions and moving it up four or five steps. It's also acknowledging you're human. You do need to feel what you're feeling, but you don't want to stay stuck there. So I choose instead of instead of feeling shame, I choose to feel embarrassed because I know I have worth and value. So let's talk about fear. There are a lot of different kinds of fear. And the example that I've got here is like the fear of going on and performing, the fear of speaking um, to an audience or speaking out loud. So instead of feeling fear, I choose to feel excited because I am about to do great things. So again, you're going to take that feeling of fear and flip it around to excitement. Now, there are other kinds of fear that we can fill in a different word. If you're afraid of going for a job interview, I choose to feel, and again, you can use excited in that situation. I choose to feel excited because this is a great opportunity and I know I'm qualified for this job. Another example is unworthy. So many of us, and, and particularly women, I think, do not feel worthy. Um, and so for worthy, we're going to say, instead of feeling unworthy, I choose to feel like a beginner because I am smart and I can learn to do new things. Instead of feeling jealous, I choose to feel admiration because I want that person to win too. So we're going to take a quick break right now. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some other tools when you're in the heat of an emotion, when you're in that intensity, how are you going to shift it? So come right back and we'll pick up where we left off. And welcome back to the Unshakable Living Show, where we're talking about flipping emotions. And I also want to mention, again, um, if you want the handout, you can send me an email with the subject title emotions to Coach Lisa at lisabelts.com. And if you have emotions that you're struggling with that you would like some support, I do offer life coaching. And everyone gets a free 30-minute complimentary life coaching session. So if you have not done life coaching before and you want to take it for a spin, also email me at coachlisa at lisabelts.com and we can set up a complimentary life coaching session. 
So again, what we were talking about was flipping emotions. And so now I kind of want to touch a little bit on what causes emotions. So sometimes there's an external force that comes into us. Someone says something, does something, someone triggers us and it's outside of us, but we experience that emotion. And so you again have a choice. You have a choice to stay in the driver's seat and not respond. And it does take practice, it takes discipline and some self-control, but you always have the choice of taking and flipping that emotion. And the more you do this, the easier it gets. So our goal with our emotions is to always move up the scale towards joy and love. And understand that typically you don't move, as we mentioned before, you don't move in a big jump but you always want to go from a lower vibrational emotion towards a higher vibrational emotion. And so some other tools that you can use when you're experiencing motion, one of them that we all have heard probably about is to take some deep breaths. So it's to hit the pause button, stop wherever you are. If you know, even if you're in an argument or a discussion, a heated discussion with somebody, you can always stop and take three or four deep breaths. You know, it's the old adage about count to 10. And if you need to walk away, walk away. But I want to talk about deep breathing for just a minute because there's some physiological reasons behind why breathing helps you control emotion. When we're in that intensity of that emotion, we tend to breathe very shallow. Fear will make you breathe shallow. Anger, rage, hatred, shame. If, if you're wanting to feel invisible because of whatever's coming against you, you basically kind of you know crawl inside yourself and you don't breathe very deep. What that does is deprive your brain of oxygen and that oxygen is what helps your brain process more logically. Remember back at the beginning of the show, we talked about the difference between emotion and reason or logic. When you're in the depth of that emotion, you kind of want your logic to kick back in by stopping and taking some deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Repeat that three or four times. You're getting oxygen to your brain and it makes you more capable to manage your emotions. And as simple of a thing as it is, it is really a profound effect when you will take the time to do that. Another thing is to move your body. If you can't go for a walk or a run or go exercise, literally shaking your hands, shaking your arms, it releases some of that pent up trapped energy and it will reduce some of that intensity. Now, again, I know if you're in a certain situation, you may or may not be able to actually shake your hands, but if you can move your body, even if you need to tell the person, I need you to pause and I need to walk away for two minutes and I'll be right back. Respect yourself enough to have the desire to have a realistic, productive conversation and taking that time out will absolutely make a difference and allow you to stay in the driver's seat and stay in control. Another simple technique is called grounding. You basically take your shoes off and stand barefoot on some natural substance. So it can be wood, it can be earth, it can be grass, even concrete will work, but you don't want rubber soles. You want your feet on the ground. And again, what that does is just like a lightning rod grounds that energy. It allows that excess energy to go out of the bottom of your feet and into the earth. It's called earthing or grounding. And again, it's just going to help to take some of that excess energy and drain it away from you so that you can process things more logically. Another really effective to tool is essential oils. Um, I personally use doTERRA, but any high quality oil will do. It cannot be a synthetic essential oil. It does need to be a true essential oil. But essential oils also have vibrational frequencies, just like our bodies and our emotions do. Rose oil 
is the highest vibrational substance on the planet, literally the planet. And rose oil is a little more expensive, but you can get, um, doTERRA has what they call rose touch, which is a carrier oil with rose oil. And even that will help to raise your vibration. When we get sick, our body, our vibrational um, frequency gets lower when we're ill. If you will use essential oils when you're sick, it will help to raise your vibration. Also, when we're sick, whether it's a head cold or allergies, flu, whatever, our emotions are harder to deal with. So again, using essential oils will help to raise your vibrational frequency, making you more able to want to raise your vibration of your emotions. I also use two blends from doTERRA. One is called Balance. The other is called Elevation. If you don't have a doTERRA person, again, you can reach out to me and I will get you in touch with, with someone that can help you uh, get some essential oils. Lavender is another good one. Sometimes when we're really wound up and we're high stress, we actually need to de-stress. And lavender um, is also a really good one to help you um, kind of slow down, calm down. Lavender is good to help you sleep. And again, I'm not gonna go into this a lot, but sleep and staying hydrated also help your body function better so that when you do experience emotions, you're able to deal with them better. Sleep is huge. Can't say it enough. We probably hear it frequently, but again, scientific studies have shown how sleep deprived America is. We have this standard that says I have to be productive for you know, 14, 16 hours a day. And so we're running on exhaustion. And when you're exhausted, you're a lot more sensitive to your emotions. Okay, so sleep is another one. So I wanna come back to the idea of emotional intelligence for just a minute. And so if you're like me, if even if you're, you're journaling, sometimes it can be really hard to put a word or a name to your emotions. And so again, some smart person developed these charts that have pictures of faces and words. And so if you will Google emotion face chart or feelings chart, you can find free printable charts on the internet. And basically it just helps you even see the words to help you identify the emotions you're experiencing, the emotions you're feeling, and then you can choose what you want to raise that or flip that emotion to. It's like in order to be able to flip it, you have to know what it is first. And particularly any of you that have kids or grandkids that struggle with emotions, the more educated we can make them and the better tools we can give them the younger they are, the more they're gonna mature and, and grow into that emotional intelligence and understand better how to deal with that. So another thing I wanna to touch on tonight, and, and um, I know we're getting down to the end here, but sometimes there are emotions we think we shouldn't feel. I shouldn't feel hatred, true hatred towards someone. You know, for those of us that were raised with a, a biblical background or Christian principles, you know, there are certain feelings or emotions that feel taboo. But I really want to challenge you when you deny an emotion, it doesn't make it go away. It just stuffs it down rather than letting it surface. So I really want to challenge and encourage you to feel what you're feeling, but don't stay stuck there. And so this is also a really great time to invite God into your conversation because God created us with a divine blueprint and that divine blueprint includes emotions. And there is scripture after scripture after scripture that describes our heart. Um, one of them is um, a glad heart makes a cheerful face, but by sorrow of heart, the spirit is crushed. So again, acknowledging your emotions good, bad, or indifferent. Emotions are really, um, they don't have a good, bad, or indifferent. They just are. It's what we do with them. 
Um, there's another scripture, Proverbs 17, 22, a cheerful heart is good like medicine. So when your heart is not cheerful, that can make you feel bad. That's when you want to flip the script on those emotions and raise them up. So as a life coach and particularly a mindset coach, I have other tools that will help you flip your flip the script on your emotions and move them up the scale. Again, you are in the driver's seat of your life. You have the power to choose the life you live, and that includes your emotions. So be sure to reach out if you would like some help identifying emotions, flipping emotions, or setting some goals and getting some additional tools. Reach out to me at Coach Lisa at lisabelts.com. So everybody have a wonderful evening, afternoon, or morning, and I will see you again in two weeks. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Unshakable Living Show, supernaturally and divinely unshakable with Lisa Belts. Tune in twice a month for your well-deserved dose of positive energy and your personal reminder that you are perfectly imperfect, and that's okay. Find your true calling and influence the world around you for the better with your profound gifts. Walk away feeling truly unshakable. Remember, God can't steer a parked car. So step on the gas now with Lisa and let him do the rest.